Hello, my name is Robert Wijstra, product owner at Firely. And today I'd like to give you an overview and all the new features of Firely Terminal, formerly known as Torinox. Firely Terminal is the command line tool from Firely to do everything that you want to do with Fire directly on the command line. Firely Terminal works cross-platform on Mac, uh, Linux, but I'll show it today on Windows here. And Firely Terminal, it listens to the command fire on the command line. And the most important feature you will need is being able to access the help information. So just type dash dash help and it will list all the things you can do with the tool. But I'll take you through the most important ones right now. First off, let me show you how to use Firely Terminal as a fire client. I'll first show how you can use the help function to get more information on any specific command in here. So let's see how we would use fire search. And we'll see that we can use um, Firely Terminal as a fire client, just like you would be able to use Postman to put or read or delete any specific resource that you have access to. So we see in this command that we can search a specific fire server for a specific fire type and then pass any arguments to the search that we'd like. So let's fire search our Firely server, https funk.fire.ly for any patient which has my name, so is war. And we'll see that one resource is being returned from the server um, and it's pushed on our stack. You might wonder what the stack is. Let me show you, fire, stack. So this is an internal, um, internal overview of the resources, an internal memory of uh, the resources that Firely Terminal is currently working with. And we see that there's only one resource on the stack right now, and we can work with this one. So fire stack shows us this one resource, and then if we do fire show, it will give us a tree-like overview, just like in Simplifier or in Forge, of this specific resource. So we can see that this is a patient with a certain ID and we see that the name indeed includes the name Ward. Next up, let's see how we can interact with simplifier.net to work with our own fire resources. So um, let's start by logging in with our simplifier credentials. Uh, so we type fire login. And in this case, I've already provided my credentials, so we're logged in. And now we will have access to all Fire projects, projects that I have access to on Simplifier. So in my case, this is of course way too many projects. You probably won't have that problem. And now we can start to synchronize with that project. So currently I'm in an empty folder. And uh, let us start with some resources from a project that I've worked on. Um, so let's say Fire sync i want to sync specifically with the acme base profiles for r4 so this is the url key that you would see in simplifier.net for the project and i want to sync down to my own computer here and there we go and see as quickly as that the folder is updated i have a set of resources now in my folder to work with um, one more thing I'd like to do here. We see that there is a package.json file in here. Let's see what's in there. So this is a file that is being used in a fire package builds in fire projects to specify the metadata of the project, but also the dependencies of the project. So the other packages and projects that this project depends on. And this is being set up in simplifier by using your dependencies, but we also need to install them here locally. So let's tell, um, Firely terminal to restore what's in that package.json. So install the packages that are specified in the package.json. And now if we run fire um, scope, we can see the full list of dependencies that are being installed in our project. So we have everything that we need to work with to work with this project. Okay, now that we have a project full of resources, we can start to work with them. And I'd like to show you two very useful functions first. Fire validation and working with fire bundles. So let's start with the validation. Um, we're working with our stack again. So the stack, the internal memory of resources. Let's first make sure that that is a clear stack. 
So we have an empty stack to start with. And now I want to take um, some of the patient uh, examples that I have in this project and put them on my stack. So I have a few files in here and I'd like to push the valid patient example that I have on my stack. So let's select that one. So this is my valid patient example and I'm pushing that to the stack. We have one resource on the stack, fire stack. We see indeed that one resource in there. And when I do fire show, we'll see again that tree view of that specific patient. And now since we have the patient loaded and in our project we've installed all our package dependencies, we can validate this package against its uh, canonical claim. So when we look at this uh, resource, we see that in this method of profile, it claims to conform to the ACME base patient. So let's validate that. When we say fire, validate. And again, this works on the top resource on our stack. It's going to check whether this is a valid fire resource. And indeed, just as the name suggested, this is a valid fire resource. Of course, that's not very interesting. So let's take the other fire patient that we have here. So fire, push our uh, Acme invalid patient to the stack. And let's run fire validate. And just as the name suggests, indeed, there is issues with this one. We see nicely color coded warnings and errors in here and we see that this is an invalid patient. So this is how quickly you can do individual fire resource validation in here and pretty soon we'll also bring bulk validation of an entire project to you. Okay now we have two fire resources on the stack and this allows me to show you another feature as I mentioned bundling. So when we say fire bundle it will take the resources on the stack and put them all in one fire bundle and now when we look at the stack fire stack, we see that there is only one resource, which is the fire bundle resource. And as quickly as that, we can also uh, go the other way around. So fire split, we take a bundle that's on our stack and make individual resources again of that fire stack. And again, we have these two individual resources. So we can also save this bundle to disk, but I'll show you saving files later. Another very useful Fire terminal feature is snapshot generation. As you might know, there's only a few stacks in the world who can do full Fire snapshot generation and the .NET open source SDK that we maintain is one of them. So let's make sure that we clear our Fire stack again to begin with. And I'm going to take the Fire patient profile uh, on the stack. So Fire push our Acme patient profile, the structure definition. We push this one to the stack. We have one resource on the stack right now. Um, and when I do fire show, we can see that currently only the differential for this profile is filled. Here's the differential and it does not have a snapshot element. And just by running fire snapshot, and this will take a while, um, it will make the fire snapshot and fill that in the resource that we have on the stack. And then once that is done, we can take that resource and save it again to our file. So when we do fire uh, show right now, the snapshot is generated, we'll see a way more lengthy profile because the entire snapshot is now in here. And then once this is done printing, let's cancel that. Um, we can save this file, fire save the current resource to again, the patient pro uh, profile that we had. And as quickly as that, we have saved the resource now with the snapshot filled to our disk again. Okay, until now we've only worked with one resource at a time, but now let's step it up a bit and put a set of resources on the stack. And then I'm going to show you a filter, how you can only keep the resources that you'd like on there and how we can convert between XML and JSON formats. So in our current folder, we have many different resources. There are XML fire resources in here and also files that are not fire resources. So let's take all the XML files and put them on the stack. So we say fire push star.xml. And now suddenly we've pushed all the resources on the stack um, that have an XML extending. So all the fire resources here. And 
I don't want to work with all of them because I want to convert them to JSON and I'd only like to do that for the structure definitions. So that's where the fire command comes, the fire filter command comes in. So we say fire filter our stack based on whether they are a structure definition or not. You can use a full uh, fire path statement here, but right now we're gonna keep it simple and just check whether they're a structure definition or not. And you see that six of the resources on our stack actually match that. So now when we show our stack, it's only including those six fire resources. Okay, so we have a set of uh, fire resources which used to be XML files. And now let's go to save them to JSON files. So I'm going to make a new folder here called uh, JSON. And I'm going there, JSON. And now I'd like to take everything on my stack and save that. So we say we want to save all files on the stack as the format JSON. And right now it saves all the resources. And when we look here, indeed, we have the same resources, but now saved as JSON instead of XML. So this is a really quick and easy way to uh, change the format from XML to JSON or back. Now I'd like to move on to two new features that we're introducing with this version of Firely Terminal. And one of them is value set expansion. And this is a customer only feature. Um, so as long as you're logged in with your Simplifier account, and you have a, a license to Simplifier, then you will be able to use this feature. So let's first take a value set and put that on the stack. So fire, push, and I have a value set here called bird sex. And when I do fire show, you will see that it does include how this value set is built up so from which code systems, but there is no expansion in this value set yet. So uh, since this value set refers to only code systems which are already in my scope, so in the packages that I've installed from US Core and from the Fire Core, I can say fire expand, again operating on this latest resource on my stack. And now when I say fire show, you will see that it does include the entire expansion with all the codes that we can use here. Great, so now we have an expanded value set. Let's uh, save this one to disk again. So this specific uh, resource that we opened. And since we've now made some improvements, we've added the expansion, we added the snapshot, gener snapshot to the other resource. Let's again synchronize this to simplifier. So now I'm going to synchronize it back up. So sync, um, oh sorry, fire sync to my Acme base profiles R4 and I want to sync up instead of down. And as quickly as that, we have now made some changes locally to our project and synchronized all the files back up to Simplifier. And then for our second new feature and final feature of the day, I want to introduce you to the Firely query language, a language that we're using both in Torinox, now known as Firely Terminal, and in the Simplifier implementation guides to select any resource. And it's just a very simple SQL-like extension of Firepod. So you can use this in Firely Terminal with Fire Query and then provide your query. And by default, it will only search in your current project. So let's say we want to select from our structure definitions. Definition. definition. Um, from selection definition, select the name and the URL. And as quickly as that, we can just get a nice overview, which we can use for quality control, for example, and see that, um, well, the names are quite in order and so are the canonicals, but this last one probably needs some work. It's still using example.org. And as I mentioned, by default, this is using your project but we can even go as far as selecting um, this from the entire scope. So if I want to know all canonicals in my scope, I can just say from my scope, using scope, select from structure definition, the name and the URL. And now it will give the full list of all names and URLs of structure definitions in my entire scope. Well, this is of course very lengthy, 
um, and it's currently formatted in the terminal as a table, but we can choose many different outputs. Uh, for example, we can output this to XML, to JSON, or even to an HTML table. But in this case, I'm going to output it to JSON and that's done as quickly as the other ones. And then I can even save this to a file if I want to work with this programmatically. So my output.json. And as quickly as that, we have now a workable uh, file that we can use in another script, for example, to use all the different canonicals that we have within our scope. And with that, I've shown you a brief overview of Firely Terminal and uh, the new features that we've added to this. And I really hope that we can welcome you as a customer of this tool. Thank you very much.